Hey guys, what's up? By Sectatron here from One Hive Gazette. Here with my next clan drifter video, and I am over at Almighty Ones, another stop in this series, and a very uh fun, welcoming clan to be in. You can see uh they're at about like 35 members ish. Yeah, about 35 there. Um and uh, a little bit lower level than uh, some of the you know one hive clans or the clans that you see us facing on the channel but uh, I wanted to give you guys one more taste of kind of a smaller <clears throat> a war away from the war scene or at least the kind of political hardcore war scene uh, still very competitive but a little bit distanced from that and then probably the next clan drifter I'll bounce back to more of a uh, front of the stage kind of uh, clan that you might see on YouTube or that you might even see us facing in Genesis, a clan like that. So I'm going to kind of bounce back and forth to give you guys a good taste of what uh, the whole war spectrum looks like in Clash of Clans. But anyway, uh, Almighty Ones, let's take a look at their war log. Uh, you can see they're 146, 85, and 2, but that doesn't really give the full story because uh, I'll go into de more detail in a moment, but basically taking a look at it you can see uh, uh, as we go through they've lost that most recent one very close war actually tied that got them on the percentage and pretty much green besides a few red stripes here and there so they've really made a comeback uh, since they initially started and uh, as of recently um, just they've only lost in the last like what's this 117 days so last like a third of a year they've only lost uh, three four five six and these were very close losses so anyway uh they've been killing it in war i'm going to show some of their attacks and uh, talk about their clan a little bit as i do in every video uh so as we go into the first war we're going to look at uh the clan was founded in january of 2014 by Ares and a few others uh who came from a different clan that was kind of falling apart um Let's go ahead and take a look at number 10. We're only going to look at one from this war, then we'll look at a few from the uh, most recent war. But we have a dragon attack that we'll have in the background. Uh, nice little doubles or single zap, and then uh, has the rage for the dragons and the balloons. So a nice uh, drag loon attack. But the clan's history is that it started out kind of casual. Uh, before war, they were even doing some trophy pushing. And uh, the problem is once war came out, they had to switch to three-star strategies because uh, some of the leaders recognized they were losing uh, easy wars. So uh, they encouraged people to go on YouTube, uh, check out three-star attacks, and they kind of made that transformation. Uh, but doing so, they had to split into two clans. They started Almighty Ones 2.0, which is more of a casual clan of the people that weren't quite ready to transition into the three-star attacks. While as this main uh, clan is the... Uh, is really where you're going to see the top war guys who are trying to get the cutting edge uh, strategies down and uh, really strive to be the best in war. So uh, at this point, they're pretty much a hardcore war clan. Uh, as far as how often they wore, they wore every Sunday, uh, or not every Sunday, they wore every day except Sunday because they have a few pastors who uh, can't wore on Sunday due to their jobs. So uh, they have a break on Sunday, but they're searching Sunday night, uh, Tuesday night, and Thursday night. So you just have that 24-hour break on Sunday. But besides that, it's back-to-back -back wars, uh, three wars per week. So anyway, as this attack winds down, it's actually pretty close here. It has one dragon, one balloon. But luckily, the dragon is the one tanking. So the balloon will make its way over, take out that archer tower. Uh, go ahead and fast forward as the king kind of swings his way through some of these trash buildings. And not a whole lot of cleanup, but these three troops will be enough to get the base taken out. Uh, only a Town Hall 8 base, not quite big enough to take up too much time. So awesome attack by Knight's King. Alright, let's go ahead and go to the current war. Uh, let's see, right over... Uh, oh yeah, current war against Fury Legion. And you can see how close this was. Uh, they basically, each clan three-starred the other clans, uh, all their bases except the top three. So everything down there just left the two stars. And then it came down to percentage. They had the 64, the 71, the 73. This clan had the 53, but that 93 and the 80 uh, made the difference. So very close war, probably pretty exciting from my guess. I wasn't here for it, but uh, looks like it was a fun war. Let's take a look at a few attacks from this war, uh, starting with Lil Ares. Uh, I guess kind of the mini account of the leader. 
doing a nice uh, Govalo. Yeah, it's a Govalo. Uh, coming in with a few golems, just uh, dropping those guys down, some wizards. And uh, typically you don't see two golems, but there's a lot of initial point defense, so not like they're being wasted or anything. And uh, they're a little bit more reliable than Valks, especially when you're going for air defenses, because the golems are going to target those defensive buildings. So if you can get like a golem onto one of these air defenses, which I think is what will happen, uh, it'll go down because the golem does a little bit of damage, plus when it splits, it does a lot of damage. So uh, a little bit more reliable there. <clears throat> Everything going up to the top there. Great jump placement. Um, Valks moving their way through. Queen sitting backs, uh, sniping some of these buildings. And then right there, they're going into there for the next two air defenses. The first two were already down. Uh, as soon as that uh, defense goes down, like I said, the golems reroute back to that air defense. The one Valk is there anyway, but the golems will finish it off. And then the queen will get that last air defense. So the job is accomplished by the kill squad. Now I can send in these six balloons targeting uh, these buildings. And um, you can see he's targeting the archer towers, which is very smart. Because the archer towers and the wizard towers are what is going to actually be able to hurt these balloons. But besides that, um, these cannons are defenseless uh, to the balloons. So anyway, um, all the archer towers are down. Just finishing off these last few buildings. Go ahead and go times two as everything cleans up. Awesome attack. Uh, crush the space. Still has, still has a ton of troops left up. Uh, nice attack, dude. Um, but as far as how big their wars are, uh, they do 15 to 20. The clan hovers around 35 members, but they often have people upgrading their heroes, and uh, that kind of cuts their numbers in half, roughly, to 15 v 15, 20 v 20. Uh, but anyway, as far as arranged wars go, they do not do arranged wars currently, because it's probably difficult to match with the numbers they have and the levels they have. Uh, but they have thought about it. They're interested in possibly doing it. And uh, they also do a combined war with like their second clan, a 50 v 50 like search, where they just all get in one clan and search uh, with 50 members. And it sounds like a fun war, uh, just kind of a social war sort of. So anyway, uh, fun stuff there. But, uh, definitely thinking about doing arranged wars from what, it, from what they said. Uh, but anyway, we're taking a look at Burn the Boats in this next attack, and uh, this was pretty interesting for me to watch because I'm not sure if this was intentional or if it was just a really good adaptation during the attack, but sends in a golem, some Valks, and just kind of lets everything make its way through here. Um, <clears throat> and you can see this base has a big moat in it, but he kind of just lets everything walk around the moat and... Uh, Sorry, I'm going to sneeze, I think. Uh, <laughs> uh, but anyway, <clears throat> have a little bit of allergies. But anyway, everything uh, moves its way through and uh, hits that double giant bomb set. But the Valks are tanky, drops a heal on them. And they just kind of make their way around in a little bit of a circle here, which was interesting. I'm not sure if this was intended. He didn't really make any effort to left them into the middle of the base. So maybe it was intended. But regardless, everything's cleared out for these nine hogs. So um, as soon as these Valks make their way around the base a little more, uh, he'll send in some of these hogs. And you can see uh, that golem gets some good value tanking. The one golem kind of gets stuck at the bottom here, which is unfortunate. But anyway, here goes that group of hogs. And uh, with two heals left, they're headed right for the core of this base. Um, not a whole lot of defenses, just the uh, archer towers and the teslas in here, really, which isn't that hard to deal with, especially for hogs under a heal. Uh, so they kind of make their way through, taking out all these uh, buildings. And uh, the Valks are still moving their way around the outside of the base here with the Wizards backing them up. Uh, only lost a hog or two. Really has pretty much all of his hogs still left up, though, uh, which was awesome. Crushed this base, really has that second heal for them as well. And uh, this base is pretty much done. Not really any cleanup because the Valks took out so many of the trash buildings. Just has the core with the, uh, the uh, Town Hall and the CC, which will go down right here. And that golem goes back and finally gets that wall taken out. Kind of the mission of that golem for the whole attack. And it go, goes ahead and moves on to this next wall, which it like misses the first swing, which is weird. But anyway, uh, awesome attack to burn the boats. Uh, not sure if that was intentional, like I said, but if it wasn't, a very slick adaptation there. So uh, before we move on to the last attack, uh, we'll talk a little bit about the requirements. Uh, the requirements to join right now are to have a solid number of war stars for your town hall level so it's less for town hall 8 and as you go up to 9 and 10 uh, it gets higher but they're looking mainly for town hall 8 plus uh, if you're a town hall 10 uh, they at least 20 20 heroes probably higher and they strongly encourage 0.5 bases 
uh, to kind of give them an advantage in some of these really uh, small wars where it comes down to uh, just a few people and just how you match because you're at a huge disadvantage if you get someone or get a clan that has just maybe one or two town hall advantages on you because it's such a, a small uh, scale war that can really make a big difference. Uh, but they have group me uh, that they use to communicate. They also, I believe, have a Facebook group that you guys can check out. Um, but they they tend to drop their attacks, post them in group me. Uh, so that's a requirement for the wars. And uh, anyway, uh, I'm just trying to find the next thing here. As far as Twitter, Facebook, Instagram goes, what they have, uh, they have a Facebook group, like I mentioned, that they mainly use just to share three stars uh, attack strategy videos. It's called Almighty Ones Clash. Um, the group has people from both clans and even some Clash Royale stuff in there too. So anyway, that's kind of how you can get in touch with them if you want to join. Uh, but they don't accept people who have a cooldown on their profile, meaning that you can't go into a war because you left a clan that was in war. Uh, so they don't accept people like that because it kind of shows that you're just leaving a clan in the middle of war. Um, so anyway, to keep that in mind, uh, that they aren't accepting kind of hoppers or people like that, um, obviously, as any war clan would. But anyway, um, another attack by Burn the Boats, actually, and kind of a surgical uh, deployment there. So that way he avoids getting too destroyed by that double giant bomb set and has enough hogs with that extra heal uh, to get the job done right there. Everything's down. Just clean up at this point. Let me see if there's anything I missed here. Um, uh, let's see. Communication, they say, is the most important thing. Uh, group me. <laughs> yeah, I've already kind of talked about all of that. So anyway, um, in general, as far as this clan goes, um, I would recommend joining them. Uh, kind of like the last clan, if you're looking for a little bit of a smaller war away from the, you know, the spotlight of what Clash of Clans war scene has become. Uh, it's a little more away from the all the commotion and just some fun wars. And the thing about being in a clan like this is, because I, I, I have been in clans like this, I've had my own clans with my friends or even stuff like that, is that every attack matters. And especially when everyone is doing their attacks, because if people don't do their attacks, then it, it is really frustrating. But as long as everyone is kind of doing their attacks and striving to win a war, in like a 15v15 war, it can be a lot of fun because you can plan it out, every attack matters, you see directly how your attacks are going to affect the war. Um, a lot of fun. So if it's something that you're looking for instead of maybe more of a uh, traditional 30v30, 40v40 that you see on YouTube a lot and in my channel, uh, this is something to check out because Almighty Ones is a great clan, kind of like uh, Demolish, which was the last clan I visited. So um, anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, good luck to Almighty Ones. They look like a great clan. And uh, looking at their war log, I think... They're just going to have success in the future because I uh, really have been crushing it in war lately. But anyway, uh, next one should be a more uh, a bigger clan with maybe some more heavier weights. We can get some Town Hall 11, Town Hall 10 attacks. So stay tuned for that, which should be sometime next week. But anyway, I uh, hope you guys are liking the series, and I'll see you guys later. Bye, Sectatron out.